And we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I know, it's crazy. Um, beginning with the rule of minutes this evening. Move the board to approve the open session minutes of May 10th, 2016. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to communication and announcements. And we will begin with uh, new business recognition. The cleaning authority. Come on up. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your business? And sure. Uh, thank you for inviting me to your meeting. Uh, my name is Kwame Ofori Asante, and I'm the owner of the North Andover Office of the Cleaning Authority. Uh, we are a residential house cleaning franchise, and we strive to be the best uh, residential house cleaning company in uh, the areas we do business in. Uh, we also try to be active in the communities we do uh, business in, and I'm open to uh, sponsorship uh, for some of the activities, uh, especially uh, things like youth sports. Mm. Uh, 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 and uh, we've been open for about a month now, and uh, I, I'm also looking for uh, support in terms of uh, referrals. If you uh, know of anyone looking for a, a house cleaner, uh, you know where to send them to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we are thrilled that you're in North Andover, and, and I think what can help fit the bill for some of the things that you're asking for, every time a new business comes before us, we strongly encourage them to reach out to the North Andover Merchants Association, okay. which is a nice, strong organization here in North Andover. Um, a few of us are founding members, and we have them before us this evening as well. Um, it's a great organization. It's very helpful for all of our businesses. And it'll also give you some opportunities to give back to the community, too. Yeah, okay. So they're, they're great. But we have a certificate to give you this evening for oh. coming to North Andover. Okay. And we always like to welcome our new businesses. And this is an appreciation for locating in the town yeah. of North Andover. And we want to thank you on behalf of the town of North Andover. Thank you. Do you have an office? Do you have an office somewhere in town? Yeah, my office is in uh, 1000 Old Goose Street, uh, near uh, Giant Glass, right next to Giant Glass, okay. and in front of the airport. Okay. Oh, great. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. We're going to get now our annual update from the Conservation Commission. Are they here? Oh yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you want me to say? So, uh, well, before you begin, so the, the board had set out as a goal um, close to nine months ago through the st strategic planning session to ask uh, the chair of the first four major boards, oh, health, this. conservation, uh, zoning, and planning, to come and, and really give a brief update. We think uh, the board feels like doing this once or twice a year even for 10 or 15 minutes allows the board to stay informed on anything that may be sort of a hot topic before conservation. Uh, we noticed a lot of those typically. Um, and anything that the board may be able to help with if there are things on the horizon that you think the board can help with. So sure. that's the intention um, of the meeting tonight. Well, I'm, I'm Lou Napoli from the Chairman of the Conservation Commission. I've been on the commission for 11 years. Uh, seems like yesterday. Uh, I, th I think I've been a chairman for four. I want to first off say we have an outstanding conservation commission. Uh, it's well-rounded. We have attorneys. We have civil engineers. We have a state trooper and a dirt merchant like, uh, like myself. Um, uh, I, think, I think when I first started, it was, it was, a, it was a communication issue, communication issue as far as um, people 
the homeowners don't really know about mm. non-buffer zones and, and NOIs. And when I first came on the commission, it, everything was abbreviated, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, you know. So it was, it took, it was a very learning uh, experience. I went, to, I went to Worcester to all the um, seminars and got certified. Um, everybody on the commission is certified. Um, the staff is outstanding. Jennifer Heidi and uh, Donna Wedge are just great to work with. Um, what, what we've done, we've, we've set up a maintenance program with the, with the DPW, a lot of stuff that before when I first got on, every, you know, they, they, were, they were bonding the, w, the DPW, they were making file NOIs, and there's a lot of stuff that we, we kind of wiggled through and so that the, the town doesn't have to pay bonds and, you know, stuff that's not needed. I mean, it, the town is the town. I mean, it's just, it's kind of redundant to kind of, to take money from, and hold money up that can be well spent somewhere else. Um, we do a lot, Jen and, I, Jen and I do a lot of stuff ahead of time, like if we have home, home, homeowners that don't understand, um, instead of having meetings at 11, 11.30 at night, our meetings are over at 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. And most of the time, people come now twice, three times, twice, most of the time, twice or three times, even larger projects because we, um, we, we, go, we wiggle and we give them direction and we tell them what we want, what they need to be, and we're flexible. Um, the other thing that we did was uh, merge with zoning and planning mm -hmm. it, on third party reviews. When I first got on the commission, each department had a third party review. And you can't get three engineers to agree that the sky is blue. <laughs> never mind, <laughs> never mind to, to, uh, to, uh, to get on one page. So we, we all get together and we agree on one person and it streamlines the uh, permitting process quite a bit. Um, we do have a couple times we've had legal issues, but usually, and, and uh, let's see, I'm, I'm, like I said, 11 years, I think we've had maybe three since I've been on. So that's, that's, cutting, way, that's cutting way down. Uh, but any other any questions? I'd be more than happy to answer. No, I think that um, it, it's actually in our town charter that yes. all boards and commissions come before us. It's something that we haven't done. Um, it actually came up at our October um, um, planning session, and, and uh, Selectman D. Calagero has, has really kind of... Um, I don't want to say push for it because then it sounds like the rest of us are against it, but I think, <laughs> and we're certainly not. Advocate. I think it's it advocated for it. Yes, thank you. Um, and I think it's great. And even just Lou, just just this, mm -hmm. I already know more than I did. So I think it's I think it's great not only for the for us because you may have things that that, that we can help with too. But I think for um, the town in general, it it allows people to understand more. I'm one who always says without the hundreds of volunteers that we have, this community would cease. <laughs> so it's, it's great to hear from, from yeah. It's a lot of work. It's, it's, uh, it's, not just a, it's not an easy board to be on. No. Um, and they're always changing. Um, DEP's changing all the time. Um, if I ever get in a pickle, I always come and see the town manager. <laughs> <laughs> Wise man. So that was be my question. Any roadblocks, anything that we can help with? Anything you know you see as impediments now, or anything? No, like no. I, I think you know. They, you know, sometimes once we'll we'll get an applicant that's a little contentious because they come in with it, you know, with they think their backs against the wall. Yeah. And we we try and calm down. We're on your side. Yeah. And. Uh, it usually works out. We've we've had a couple. We've had there's a couple. Every once in a while, you get you get a couple. But even the the developers have come around that they know what they can get away with, what they can't, and they know that. One another thing that we used to we used to um, they they'd apply for for a permit, and and we go okay. And then when they came for their certificate of compliance, the as built was totally opposite. <laughs> you know, total different house. You know, the porch would be you know, and when there's a wetlands. Uh, all barriers that you, you really can't do that. So, so what we do now is we we have triple modification fees, and uh, and that doesn't even mean, mean we're going to approve it. Mm. So, and I, all the developers and uh, builders have come around, and a lot of stuff that if they want to make a change, all they do is call Jen, and if Jen has a problem, then she calls me, and then we, you know we tell them if they have to file for modification. So it, it it's ongoing. It's not just from meeting to meeting. If there's stuff going on. 
all the time to get these people's vote. Right. Are there direction, or is there direction that you want from the Board of Selectmen? Policy setting is there. So, so you know, the impetus for me was when I joined the board, um, I joined the, the appointment subcommittee with Rosemary. We had the opportunity to sit down with individuals as they were either being appointed or reappointed. And so we had this great opportunity to really dig in deep with members who appointments were up. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't something that the entire board got exposed to. And I thought it was good for us as a, as a five member panel to publicly have these conversations to see what type of direction you could use from us. Right. Um, and, and just offer, I mean, just general feedback that, that we've observed in our limited capacity, because obviously, I mean, I know I'm not at, I don't think I've ever attended as a select and a con, con uh -huh. meeting, so. Be great. Uh, Riveting. We're the number you, one you rated. Come with me, I should That's right. Like. <laughs> they say we're the number one rated <laughs> board in the <laughs> <laughs> It's been good. Like I said, I mean, and I know it's, it would be nice to, to say to have, you know, fresh blood to turn the board over, but the commission is just outstanding. I mean, it's, and, and some of the members have been here 20 odd years, um, but we work, we work excellent together. I don't think there's any big, been a contentious meeting ever. Um, so, and, and, they, and everybody knows their stuff. Mm. So I mean, it, it it takes a lot to learn. I mean, for a layman very to go in and board, yeah. <clears throat> to, to get into conservation, it's a really there's a lot of stuff to learn, and we're still learning. I mean, Jen updates us all the time on new stuff that that uh, yeah. that comes through. Yeah. But uh, she's she's outstanding. She is she really does a really nice job. Well, Lou, I, I appreciate our um, your visits. <laughs> I do appreciate your visit. I know. It's, it's always good. good to see you. It's, it's been a while since we've had <laughs> Which is good and bad, right? Good so um, I, I just have one point I'm really going to make it all four boards. Um, you know, two of the boards are appointed by the selectmen, two of the boards are appointed by myself. Um, if, if you have a policy for rotating the chair, that's great. Um, if you don't, I encourage you to have one. Yeah. I think uh, I respect and appreciate that for a board, like all four boards, quite frankly, the more experience you have on the committee, the better off we are as a community. So you want folks to serve a long time. But I also appreciate the fact that the experience I have from sitting with a board like the Selectmen, having a different perspective, changing this to the chair, um, is really positive in terms of bringing different perspectives. So I, I don't say that to anyone individual. I'm going to say this, make the same point to all four groups. No. I think having a different perspective but keeping that experience and the board helps. Right. Um, we would call that succession planning in municipal government from an employee's perspective, having other people ready to fill the chair. And so if you're doing that, that's great. If for some reason the board isn't doing that on a regular basis, I strongly encourage you to do it. I yeah, we, we, uh, we have our elections. Uh, matter of fact, I think it's the 1st of June, next meeting, I think. Mm -hmm. um, not that I'm trying to beat myself in the chest, but I usually don't even get to speak. <laughs> they just Better say, off. We want Lou back. We want Lou back. Um, only because I, I, have the, I have the time um, to go and sit with Jen and, and to, during the course of the day. Uh, I play see her twice a week at least. Then I meet with her the, to meet the day before the meeting. We go over the agenda and we say this one's not ready because that's what we did in the beginning. People would just come to meetings and not be prepared. So we just continue, 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 continue. And that's how we end up with these 11 o'clock, 11.30 meetings. It's an, so, and it's totally ineffective. It's all, and it's it frustrating is. to the people having to come before you. It is. <clears throat> and, and so what, we, what I did was when I became chairman, I just said, look, at they're missing this, this, and this, and tell them we can't tell you not to come. But if you want to come, you can. But we're going to vote on the information that we have, and it looks like you might get denied. <laughs> <laughs> so, all, so all of a sudden, that that went away. So people people became more aware, and they, they know if, if Jen says they need something, best they have it. But I will I will tell the commission that they that you want to rotate. But well, I mean nothing in terms of next week. <laughs> And next week is the election. No, uh, it's just a general point. And it's certainly not to any time you spend. I, I think that what happens is we find ourselves in a position sometimes that then all of a sudden it's sort of under the gun. And for some reason, your life changes and, and, and you can't do it. Um, right. Having someone else, even if someone else participated, almost, I hate to refer to some of these uh, fraternal organizations where someone's sitting in a second chair in readiness, having other people aware of what it takes to be chair. Because I know when we sit in those 
uh, meetings, at making sure people who serve on committees understand that Sunday may serve as chair, right. helps them understand if they're really willing to participate. Right. Because sometimes the committee will change, and it, it is harder to be chair. There's no, there's no question about that. We we voted at the vice chair since I've been on, for, you know, four or five times. They take the vice chair steps aside. Then, uh, but I, I I I have no problem stepping aside if they want. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> you can visit me anytime you'd like. <clears throat> That's about it. Great. Thank, Thank, Thank you, you so much. Who's the first? Who's the first one to go through this? Right. There you go. That's yeah. all right. Yeah. Bravo. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Great guy. And next, I believe we have Dr. Trowbridge from the Board of Health. Welcome. Hello. I was asked to give a report, so I have a report. Oh, even better. Thank you. So I'm Tom Trowbridge. I'm the Board of Health. I think I know all of you to one degree or another. I have tried to minimize my visits to the, <laughs> <laughs> to the town manager's office. Um, this coming before you to give the, an the first annual report uh, comes a good timing because it gives me the opportunity to be able to introduce to you, whom I know you all know, but also to the town, our new health director, Brian Legrasse. He was an inspector with the health department in North Andover some years ago, moved over to Methuen, and has now come back to the good side of North Andover just a few weeks ago. So he's onboarding well and will um, be a, a good... Um, a good chair of the department and the staff. So we're looking forward to working together with him. Um, I'm going to spare you reading the text of what you have in the, in the annual report because I think you can all read that for yourself. So what I tried to do is put together a highlights list of things that uh, sort of a little bit with a little bit of emphasis here of things we've done over the past year and some things we're starting to look about look into doing over the next year. Um, when we I asked my fellow members to give me comments about what they thought uh, were good things we've done, were things that we've done in the past year, and all of them talked about the cigarette regulation uh, rewriting that we did last year. We spent about a year looking at this regulation, and for those of you who are familiar with it, um, I will, again, I'll spare you the details, but we basically went through our entire cigarette sales regulation and included uh, electronic cigarettes in there because presently there are no regulations at all in the state or at the federal level until actually just recently this year that covered sales of electronic cigarettes at all. And we had quite a bit of vigorous debate about it, um, but we increased the sales age of both cigarettes and electronic cigarettes and all tobacco products to the age of 21 from 18, which is the floor that's set by Massachusetts uh, DPH regulation. Um, as such, uh, redoing this regulation, we took, uh, we had open hearings to the community, we took uh, consultation and advice from the Massachusetts Association of Health Boards, our local cigarette uh, regulation guy, and quite a bit of commentary. We did this over five or six meetings, and we had a small subcommittee that reworked it, and we feel very proud of the product that we put together. Um, and it's actually now uh, a regulation or a bill that's going through the State House now about a month ago was passed in the Senate, and we understand it has favorable look in the Massachusetts, in the, um, I'm sorry, in, the, in the, um, the lower house, and the governors look favorably on that bill also. So we hope that uh, we feel like we were in the first one third to one half of towns in Massachusetts to do this relatively progressive regulation. We also spent several meetings looking at our trash truck regulations. We revised those to clarify them and remove some redundancies that were in there. Um, Susan, our past director, and Michelle, who handles a lot of that um, oversight, learned over time that the trash truck companies had issues and concerns and problems with uh, some of the specifics that were in that regulation. So we spent a fair amount of time looking over that regulation and, in essence, cleaning it up so that it would be easier to both understand as a company and hopefully to enforce as a department and a board. We spent a couple meetings looking at our fee structures. Uh, again, we realized that some of them were quite outdated. We hadn't, we realized we hadn't looked at them. Uh, I think we were also supposed to look at those annually, and we hadn't done that in quite some time. So we were able to eliminate some fees that we found that were not pertinent because they uh, rolled up into other services, and we put a couple new ones in, and we revised some numbers 
to match uh, as best we could that the, the fee uh, came into line with the cost of the service basically of how the Board of Health or the Department of Health provided that. Um, some of the things that we're able to provide as far as services to the community through our, our revolving food account, we used some of those funds to offer serve safe training to the food service community. So we had some local um, food servers came and did that and a couple of our uh, board members took that training because that's something that we have to be involved with from time to time as the board. We find that um, on an almost ongoing basis, we have to be involved both again at the department level and the board. We're involved in oversight and enforcement and education on rental housing to protect tenants. I know that some of you are involved in, in rental and housing in, in the town and we have a very significant role in oversight of that that tends to come to us by complaints, which isn't how we would necessarily like it. Mm. Uh, but again, that's sort of how things oftentimes wind up in our lap. So we do spend a fair amount of time working on um, the housing regulations in North Andover. And I want to make a point. We do not have a North Andover, particularly a North Andover housing code. There is a Massachusetts housing code that we um, enforce, interpret, and use in terms of what goes on in North Andover. We've been asked that several times in various issues. Where is the North Andover housing regulation? There is no North Andover housing regulation, just like there really is no North Andover food code. We're the bearers of the enforcement and the um, oversight and education of that. So uh, that's a point that we've tried to make to people. It's not rules that, that we make up as a board or, or department. Um, our nurse, Debbie, who uh, many of you know, has continued to work for arranging vaccine clinics, uh, for <coughs> providing for flu clinics, uh, as well as providing vaccines for herpes and pneumonia. And she does a good job on that, both arranging clinics and doing it on an occasional basis if she gets phone calls when we do have funds available to do that. Some of the, for instance, the pneumonia uh, vaccine is a pretty expensive vaccine. So when we've had funds available and she gets a few phone calls, we try to have her do it where she'll do four or five or six people that, um, that have asked about it that we will try to provide that for her. Um, one of our board members, his wife is a nurse and does CPR training under the American Heart Association, uh, I'm sorry, American Red Cross. So we offered a class this past year that was board sponsored. Um, and again, that was open to the community and a couple of our members did that. Um, Debbie has also worked hard on putting, on trying to put prescri prescription drug containers placed in various places in the town, uh, both in terms of drugs and needles, and for various logistical reasons, both in terms of rules, um, safety, and other matters. That's not always so easy to do, but um, again, she's worked hard on trying to do that. Um, and we've also, on an ongoing basis, worked hard on looking at the mosquito control in town. Uh, last month, we had the mosquito control district they have a new manager handling the district and she came and, and gave a very thorough presentation to us and we've now seen the vector management plan and the best management plan that's already ongoing in North Andover to, um, uh, to protect us for the summer. Again, I'll spare you the details, but mosquito control starts, has already started a month ago. That doesn't happen only in August and September, but that's uh, an ongoing thing. Uh, really, once we're out of um, uh, freeze time, uh, the mosquitoes start to get active. Looking forward to the next year, um, when we were searching for Brian, I had a couple conversations, and we all had conversations with, uh, with um, Eric, and I think um, AirSats with, with Andrew a little bit. Um, one of the things we've talked about looking forward into the future as a board is we found that over time, we spent a lot of our time and energy on the various regulatory duties that pertain to the Board of Health and all these regulations that we oversee. And we feel that sometimes we've kind of um, put less of our energy into the human services part of this. So uh, just last week, the conversation that Brian and I had in terms of that, and again, Eric and I talked a little bit about that, was uh, working some more on some of the human services part of health. So that's where you'll see some of these tentative plans that are written down uh, under the plans for the, new fu for the future. So again, our, our key goal is to help the new director on board um, and learn his personnel and staff and board quickly. And he's already talked about considering public health-based projects that can be time-related and North Andover-related. 
uh, germane to that, him being uh, a leader in health re uh, locally. Um, he already serves on the regional task force, uh, both on um, what was set up by, by, by um, Diane DiZaglio in terms of looking at the opiate issue. We think that that's really um, obviously uh, an emerging, more than an emerging issue, but an important issue, and we hope we can uh, provide some input to that and, and help on, on sort of figuring out that very huge and, and difficult question. And he's also served on the regional task force for the emerging, emergency planning, health, and community response team that has uh, just recently expanded. So we'll be talking with him a little bit about that, how, how we can participate in that to some degree. Uh, we used to do a little bit of public education sessions and also doing newspaper articles to talk about the role of health, uh, not just personal health, but society health, and we talked about uh, re-energizing some of that. Uh, Brian and I talked a little bit about maybe doing sessions uh, with groups that are involved with the youth, the senior, and the veterans groups, and just um, a month or so ago, a couple of our members did something on colon cancer with that, and they talked to the senior group, and that went over well. Uh, we'd like to continue to increase the vaccine coverage to the public, um, subject to us having funds to do that. We think that locally that's a good service to uh, the public. And we'd also, um, Brian had the idea of talking with Merrimack College. They now have a public health major there, so they have students who are looking for projects, so we feel like we're a good place for that. So I didn't know that. That's great. We're talking about, uh, we will be talking about doing some project-based learning and hopefully bringing the Merrimack College interns in public health into the department and, and a little bit with the board and getting some real on the ground learning and experience in terms of um, public health. Uh, I'll speak to the question of the chair. I think that that's a great question and I'd love to pass that on. So we're actually tomorrow having a meeting, um, just specific to your question, not to drop this on the members. I've. Um, offered that I would be chair for another year, but then I think it is time that um, someone else has would become the chairman of the board, and I, I do hear your point loud and clear to provide sir, for um, succession planning. So that's my report. Great. Great Can I ask Super. you um, a question about the Zika virus? Um, they said that it's in Massachusetts already. It was on the news today. Well, I missed that today. <laughs> it, as far as I understand, presently the, the Zika virus infections that have been in the United States, and again, I don't know what happened today, have been by travel. People who've been out of the country and have been infected and then come back here. But um, the sort of um, in an open room, the, the different thing about the vector base of this is, is that Zika virus infection is um, potentially sexually transmitted which no other uh, mosquito virus in the past has been known to do that. So there is some risk there, um, and we're, we've talked about that at our board meeting. There are, um, Larry Fixler is the one in our group who likes to sort of research things and come to us and give a little five-minute five primer on things, so we've been collecting information on that, and, and we'll start to, to look at that. The Mosquito Control District has sort of their role from they're empowered by the legislature specifically them they don't take their marching orders directly from us we can massage the local um, directives and things but really their their real direction is from the state but they're starting to think that um, they will relatively soon get more direction in terms of looking at other things up till now they really have looked at controlling and, and doing uh, uh, surveillance of the types of mosquitoes that we've seen, so West Nile virus, Tripoli, things like that. But um, they've their role is not. We've been asked. We've asked them this question several times about ticks and, and Lyme disease and things that come from that. That's a very different ball game when it comes to control and the costs that are involved in that. Um, and we had a conversation with them about that. But I think that uh, um, control of that the Zika virus is going to be um, a challenge. But I, I don't know that there's quite an answer yet, but I think that that will be starting to become part of things that they talk to us about pretty quickly, I would guess. Okay. Uh, just as a point of information, we pay the North Shore, uh, North Shore uh, the Merrimack Valley Mosquito Control Authority an amount of money as part of a regional initiative. I, I want to say approximately $92,000, give or take a few dollars, uh, is the group, is our allotment to that particular 
uh, operation or fund, and we annually get a budget from them. They explain how they develop the cost, and more often than not, we, we approve it and move on. Correct. That, that number is determined by a formula at the state through the state legislature that's really very complicated. I've never tried to really <laughs> figure it out. I'm sure you. <laughs> no, I haven't either. I think it's, it's I think it's geography and population population based. But they they again sort of get they as a broad group put together uh, a best management plan or a vector management plan that pertains to the district, and then they do handle us differently, obviously, than they handle uh, Marblehead because we have different local wetlands mm -hmm. things and so on. So, um, but yeah, they they do provide us quite a bit of. Um, local control and so actually for the last couple of years they had offered and the board has allowed uh, request brain uh, to do more nuisance management than uh, specific uh, risk based which we can't handle everybody in town calling on that but when there's um, a request come in uh, the board looks for more requests in just one town we try to they try to do and we try to look for a neighborhood or a street rather than one house. I can't send the truck to treat one house. It just doesn't work that way. But um, when a neighborhood or uh, a street requests a spray, we do that on a, a basis according to their schedule and availability. Uh, one thing uh, on the 2016-2017 plan, something that I spoke to Brian about and Eric about as part of the interview process is I think, I think we need to reflect on the permitting process within the Department of, of Health. Um, reviewing the permit, uh, maybe meeting with folks who most often use the permit, the permit application itself, uh, to make sure that it's user friendly. Um, it can be difficult, you're covering so many topics, quite frankly, if it's a new restaurant for someone seeking some change. But I think it's a good practice for us um, to reflect on the permit, the language of the permit, the length of the permit, and find, always find, try to find ways to improve how we obtain all the information we need, but do so in an efficient way. So when someone places a business or comes to do business here, um, we feel like we've not created such a mountain in terms of the raw paperwork that uh, is an impediment to starting business. So uh, I'm not saying it is, but I think it's a good opportunity with a new director to reflect on that as well. Correct. And I've had conversations with, again, with Susan Sawyer about that beforehand. And I, I hope that looking, Jermaine, to that question, um, we, in terms of you've asked questions sort of to things in the open room, um, we hope that the um, the process of working together with the other departments involved in permits, such as building and other sort of is um, having new people in those departments that will sort of be able to figure some of that out. I think there were bumps in the road sometimes along the way there, and we hope we can smooth that out so that everybody involved in the permitting process can have an equal say, an equal sort of participation in the process. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Question, uh, same question, is there anything that we can help you with, anything, any impediments, any roadblocks, anything that you know this board can, can work closely with you on or uh, anything? Um, well, I think the extent to the permit process does probably need to be cleaned up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and Selectman DeCollegero and I have already talked a little bit about the, the opiate task force. I think at some point, uh, maybe when Brian gets a little bit more involved in, in sort of learning things in town, maybe we need to have some sort of a conversation at a different meeting about that. Um, we have, I'm not the appointed member to the task force, so I, I, I won't speak to where it is right now, but I think that's something that perhaps in North Andover, we're just a little bit behind progress of some of the other local towns. So to the extent that we can help, uh, all I can say is sort of figure this out because I don't know what the answer is or where this is going to go. Um, you know, I, I sat with the Dental Society on a, a meeting uh, where the, the director of the DPH came and they sort of admitted also they don't really understand how to fix this either. So there's a lot of money being put into this, but um, the answers are sort of very out there right now. So. Um, I think that's something we'd like to maybe come and talk to you at some point about once we get a little bit more involved with the task force. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. It's great. A lot of exciting things happening from that Board of Health. It certainly is. I yeah. I, I think it's exciting that it's so comprehensive and, and focuses on such a broad range of issues. So you were busy in 2016, Doctor. In 2015, 2015. It looks like you will stay busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
All right. Thank you so much for coming. Um, next, we're looking at our current job postings and vacancy log. If you notice from the log and other communications, we're, we're keeping busy. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, we should have a number of different folks at uh, the next meeting uh, to fill some vacancies. They've been out there more uh, traditional men at level vacancies, and we should have some folks at the next meeting. Great. Okay, moving on to consent items. Um, is Christopher Marshall here? Yeah, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Chris. From the Borderline Running Club to use the streets of North Hanover for our 4th of July road race. Yes. Um, I think I've sent a package of information and maybe you've had a chance mm -hmm. to review it. Um, this will be our fourth year hosting and directing the event, uh, July 4th, of course. Um, in your package, you'll find uh, maps of our uh, certified courses, measured certified courses, copies of our insurance certificate, um, as well as a written safety plan that I've I've authored in order to ensure the race and, and um, reviewed with um, Chief McCarthy and uh, Lieutenant Gray and Foltz. So we are ready to go, and um, all we need are runners and roads. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be able to. We can provide you at least one. The roads. The roads. Least one road? <laughs> I think the runners will come. I think the runners will come, too. They always come. They yep. always come. They do, do I have a motion to? I'm going to make a motion that the Board of Selectmen, uh, the Board of Selectmen approves the request of the Borderline Running Club to hold the 4th of July road races beginning at 7 a.m. at the Town Common at the All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Good luck. We'll It'll be in glass. There'll be plenty of runners. And good weather. It'll be wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Next, we have Sylvie Folds, North Hanover Merchants Association, um, requesting to use the town common for the annual fall festival on Saturday, the 24th of September. Yes. Um, the last two years we've been on the common um, for the fall festival. We have the game tents and all the kid activities and then we have crafters we had about 70 crafters last year so um, looking to do about the same and um, we we do the same as sheep sharing we you know we request to block off um, that portion of uh, not Osgood um, Massa. thank you Massa. Um for the parking so the people cars aren't on the on the lawns um, and I know we were talking to the police department about the details, um, what to do there. We'll have the shuttle from the schools. I'm still waiting for the school approval for the Atkinson um, parking lot, but we'll do the shuttle just like the sheep sharing. Wonderful. So pretty much the same thing. <laughs> great. It's a great event. Too. It is a great event. It's really fun. It's a great We've event. We've had great weather every year. Yes, Very so. lucky. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> so, Madam Chair, then I'll move with the Board of Selectmen. Approve the request of the North Hanover Merchants Association to use the town common for the fall festival on Saturday, September 24, 2016, from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and to close Massachusetts Ave from Oscar Street to Andover Street from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we have a request from Diana Flahai uh, from the Neurofibromatosis Northeast. Um, Group to use the streets in North Hanover for the sixth annual Coast to the Cure bike bike ride on Saturday, September 10th. Anyone here for that? To speak to it? Everything is in order. Do I have a motion to accept? I'm sure I'll move the Board of Select and approve the Neurofibrosis Metosis Northeast to use the streets in North Hanover for the sixth annual Coast to the Cure bike ride on September 10th, 2016. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have a request uh, from St. Gregory Armenian Church to use the portion of Main Street for their picnic on the 11th. Anyone in the room? Yeah, Come on up. Good evening. Um, I'm Diane Hello. From noon to 5 on September 11th. Yes. Does anybody have any questions? Everything is in order. It's the same thing every year. It's the same thing every year, yes. Now, Chair, I move the Board of Selectmen approve the request of St. Gregory Armenian Apostolic Church to close the portion of Main Street from Water Street to the crosswalk at St. Michael's Church parking lot on Sunday, September 11, 2016, from noon to 5. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Have a Thanks, great Rosa. annual event. Thank you. I pray for good weather on that day. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. You're all welcome to come. Thank you. Um, we have a request to surplus some equipment um, in a vehicle from the fire department. Madam Chairman, the information is in your package. The um, two striker stretchers, which would be applied to a new stretcher, which will go with the new ambulance. And then the truck to go towards the new ambulance. Is that what you just said? I spoke to the stretchers. Oh, okay. And the truck towards the new ambulance as well? Yes. Okay. Madam Chair, move to the Board of Selectmen approve the request of Fire Chief Lee McCarthy to surplus a 2002 Ford F550 brush truck, 12 AEDs, and two stretchers as presented. Second. Second. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I was waiting for something else. Okay. So, Madam Chair, the next request from the DPW Director is part of the initiative to uh, facility master plan item to improve. The DPW facility, I've uh, directed the DPW director, it's also a good time to clean up the site. Yeah. So he is systematically uh, going through the process of surplusing various equipment, or in this case, bikes, which may have been there for years, and other material that's been on the site, which has not been particularly... Uh, he have 100 abandoned bicycles. Yes, yeah, probably DPW. dating back to when they were... So probably like years, ten years, whatever ago. they were called, a hundred years ago. So yes, they've been there for a while. So we used to give them away free. We used to used to. Have, uh, I don't know if it happened here, but it was pretty common to have this bike surplus. We have a bike there. thing at the police department, right? These are not the yeah. bikes you Some would give away. Can't them in. They're not. They're so these not are not worth like worthy. donating to any no, organization. No, no, big. Uh, Balloon No, nope. these like are them. best donated to the scrap yard. Well, it's like collector's items. These are junk. Yes, I would. I would just recommend we surplus them. And I know someone who wants that boat. Um, well, we will. We will, we will after we surplus it, will be going out for us. Right. Okay. And I, a boat may be a little aggressive. It's it's a flotation device. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but I, I didn't want to leave the impression that this is a. It is a. Well, let's a, call it a, the dory a, that it is. It's a, it's intended for the water. You may see those commercials where they spray the boat because it's water. leaking, right. and it's, yeah, this it might be a watercraft. Yes. I do actually. I have yes. someone who hounds me about it. Yes, so. we know. Well, and all sales are as is. is. That's okay. right. So, so Chair, move that the Board of Selectmen approve the request of DPW Director Bruce Thibodeau to surplus materials at DPW Yard as presented. Wonderful. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Moving on to accepting a donation from the North End of a Historical Society. Stan, would you like to speak to it? Yes. Sorry. Official business. Really. Do I have a motion? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was nice. <coughs> uh, Stan Limpert, 43 Stone Cleave Road, and president of the North Andover Historical Society. I just wanted to come and tell you how pleased we are to be able to make this donation to the town. It's Thank a you. wonderful thing, and we were really pleasantly surprised when uh, Chief McCarthy. Uh, took over the department with his energy and enthusiasm about this project. You know, we had, you know, tried to get somebody interested and sort of failed at that, but when he took over, he and what I would call the friends of the North Andover Fire Department, a group of people that are strong supporters of the department, got very enthused about this project. So we're really happy to be able to donate this equipment to the town and specifically to the fire department. I'm sure they're going to do a great job with it and then hopefully we'll continue to provide some historical and even educational opportunities for the town. So it's a great, great, great. thing to be able to it's do. It's a win-win. Super. It's yeah. great. Good, Good to help. A motion for the Lion Hand Pump. Move we'll approval. Delighted Please to do. It. Did you say second, though? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's great. Just for, I don't think we mentioned, but it's a Lion Hand Pump fire engine and two hose reel carts. The, uh, the, so the, uh, the, the hand pumper was actually used in the mills. Yes, it's it was a mill engine. fire engine, mm -hmm. and it was when it wasn't being used in the mills, it was loaned to the town. Right. So it was right. interesting. Well, didn't you find them in like a building or something? The they came to the society when uh, the Stevens uh, turned over the Stevens estate to Boston University. It was in their carriage house. Okay. All that equipment had been there, and so they gave it to the society, and so we've had it since that was '54. So we've been. Oh holding on to it since then, yeah. and it's uh, been in our storage for a while, so we're gr it's great to get it out so people can see it, and that's a wonderful opportunity, so 
for the decision. Where are they going to put, do you know? Um, in the mills, and also, I believe, potentially in the police station. The, the hand pump is... The fire station. The, the, um, the hand pumper is not much bigger than the, this table. It's fairly small, so it could go in the training room maybe or someplace in the fire station. That's the expectation. It'll be in the training room. And the, uh, the two uh, postcards are too large to go there, so there may be places in the mills, in the east or west mill buildings to show them off. So That's great. It'll be great. It'll be fun. Great. Thank you, Thank Sam. You. Um, we're moving on to our request for... Um, um, I'm sorry, for uh, qualifications for legal services. So Ray can describe the chair asked that we place this on the agenda. Ray can talk a little bit about process in terms of what an RFQ would look like. I think the initiative of the discussion was that we have an issue at an RFQ for, uh, in this case, it would it'd be special counsel legal services for, you know, I, I can't. It was, certainly hasn't happened during my time, so it was a conversation you want to do that. So Ray can talk a little bit about what the process would look like. Our request for qualifications, we put together a document, we advertise it in the uh, Goods and Services Bulletin, which is uh, a, a publication of the Secretary of State's office, I'm sorry, Secretary of the Commonwealth's office, yes. um, as well as local newspaper. And basically, we make decisions based on qualifications and not on price. Uh, we set up specific criteria of what we're looking for. Um, and then the two major components of an RFQ are minimum criteria which everybody must, whoever applies must meet in order to, uh, uh, to be considered. And the second one is uh, a qualitative criteria, which is a scoring system. So at that point, then three to five people are designated as evaluators. The number of proposals that come in, everybody gets them and must score them individually without con consultation or discussion with anybody else. They come to one central person, typically me tally up the scores, and then the town always reserves the right to interview any of the top three um, uh, scoring firms uh, to determine uh, if they would be the right fit. Uh, it's the way we hire architects. It's the way we hire engineers. It's the way we hire uh, project managers. Um, we've done something at the health department with uh, uh, environmental monitoring in the same fashion, et cetera. So I, th I think, I mean, at least the recommendation would be, we'd issue a broad enough RFQ to handle any number of services, and then have uh, firms reply to that RFQ. They could do so with a specialty in um, labor, or they could do that if they had the experience in-house to handle land use, labor, or human resources, using three major topics. And then, in turn, provide the responses back to the board, who would work as the rating authority. So you would individually get the responses, and, and as Ray identified, you'd be responsible following the qualitative criteria to. Oh my goodness, sir. Uh, you'd be responsible following the qualitative criteria of ranking each of the responses, and then they would individually go back to Ray, since those are done. Um, independently of, of other members, and then uh, Ray would be able to report the results to you of the response to the RFQ. If you felt there was one or two or three councils on a particular topic or areas that you wanted to meet or, or meet with here, you, you could certainly have them come in and talk about their experiences, what their qualifications would be, and then ultimately the goal would be to hire, um, could end up quite frankly with the same council as we've used in the past, we could end up with different council, uh, special councils, but just from a transparency perspective, the chairman thought it was important that every so often, whatever the number of years, there, are, there is no requirement to do this, but it, the, the belief is that from a transparency perspective, it's a good step. It's a step in the right direction, I think, to make sure that, that we're used. I mean, our next item is, is, is to yeah. appoint thought, special counsel. Yes. I you thought know what there was I mean? something so. And actually, I, I spoke to you about it. I thought for right. our, our special counsel, whether it be labor, whether it be this, that we should have as a board, because we're the appointing authority for mm -hmm. legal counsel, we should have a say as this will be our uh, land use, this will be our labor, this will be our environmental. Right. Uh, we sort of just have it almost by, I don't know, not a proper word, but we just always had. Years ago, we always had Kim Kimmel for mm -hmm. environmental. We've had Collins for um, labor. labor. Yeah. So I just think this way, and it gives some direction towards the town manager and the employees. Mm -hmm. This is who we've looked at. This is who the credentials we feel fit our needs. This is who we would like you to call. Unless they came, you know, one of the, like Dr. Trowbridge said, listen, I have something that's a little bit more specific. 
can we maybe consider this council? We did that, frankly, I, I was, Donnie was around. We hired a special council, uh, frankly, renowned throughout the United States for our adult entertainment bylaw. Mm -hmm. um, he's argued all the way up to the Supreme Court, and as a result, we have probably some of the most comprehensive adult entertainment bylaws in the state of Massachusetts. But it'd be things like that, that we as a board say, yes, this is the person or persons that we want to go with. So I, I think it's a good idea. Great. We, as you said, though, we could end up with the same group. We, we absolutely because could, but we won't. And you could end up with one firm, because I, I think what the right, our firm should be broad enough firm. to do is to identify the fact that the, that, uh, the RFQ should be broad enough to allow you to pick individuals or if there are firm or firms that handle multiple areas of expertise and you feel comfortable with them because they have all the particular qualifications, you could do that as well. So we would attempt to craft the RFQ uh, broad enough to, to cover all of the criteria and then, and then the board would be responsible for evaluating the responses. So we would have, we could potentially have different firms or individuals yes. to cover different Yes. Right, based yep. on this yeah. The only thing that we would really need to look into when you hire one firm, sometimes you get you get assigned their their junior lawyers to handle different mm -hmm. things, and that mm -hmm. that's so that, been, that's actually one of the criteria you put in that's scored, so yeah. that you could set a minimum threshold that someone has to have just number of years, uh, you know, number of year, x number of okay. years, and then based on if they have that minimum x number of years, they get so many points if they have. More than that, they get another set of points, et cetera. So that's how the scoring but works. But not exactly including that. But not including their education as their experience. Oh no, 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 no! Education uh, is not an experience. It's definitely nope. not an no. experience. Experience is experience. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so we, what we would do next is is try to work off some templates and our own experiences and craft a draft RFQ and forward it to the board and ultimately then proceed in that regard. We have attorneys that are doing this particular work. You know, labor is an example now. We, we wouldn't recommend you change that until such time as you felt like comfortable in changing it. And then. So, so that I'm, I'm clear though, so it would be this board that would do the scoring. I mean, it, we are yes. appointing. Well, that's our recommendation. It's up yeah. to you. Yeah. No, no, it's up to you all to decide, but right. you don't, if, right. it's, if it's the five of you, we, you each get a set of proposals and you score them individually. You score them individually. But they are individually scored, yes. Right. Which yeah. I think is great. No, I agree That's that. our recommendation. Excellent. If I can say that that's how the Board of Health did it when we picked the consultant for the um, surface water services and that very well. clean system, yeah. Great. Good. Madam Chair, I move the Board of Selectmen direct the town manager to issue a request for qualifications for legal services. Second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Great. Now we move on to appoint special town council for the cable license. <laughs> However, uh, incongruous this sounds. Uh, so we've had, we are uh, in the process of begun the process of renegotiating the cable license, cable franchise license with Verizon. So just as to, for the public more than the board, we have two cable licenses, one with Comcast, one with Verizon. Each cable license has a five, excuse me, a 10 year contract life, but they are an overlapping term so that they, they come up every five years. So this is truly special counsel. Every five years you need one of these attorneys to begin and go through a process. Um, Mr. Solomon has a significant amount of experience having represented dozens of communities in this regard um, and had his extensive proposal is attached. It's uh, reviewed it, it's very reasonable. And so it doesn't make sense at this point to um, start down the process of issuing an RFQ and, and delay the fact that we're in the middle of uh, contract yeah. negotiations right. with Verizon. Right. That's the timing of it. Do I have a motion or any questions? Uh, I'll make a motion to move the Board of Selectmen appointing William H. Solomon as Special Town Council to handle the license renewal process with Verizon New England. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, yeah, that's a very specialized field. Absolutely. True. Um, we have an affordable housing unit resale up at 3 Harvest Drive, Unit 1211. Shappa has notified the town that the affordable housing unit at 3 Harvest, Unit 2011, is up for sale. Generally, we refuse our first right of sale. Yes. It's a right of first refusal. Will so the Board of Selectmen decline the right of first refusal? Have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we are looking to accept a very generous donation, $200 donation from Cheryl Phillips to Veteran Services to be used specifically for an event on May 29th, if I read that correctly. We'll let the Board of Selectmen accept donation from Sheriff <coughs> Phillips. Second. Okay. All those in favor? 
All right. Aye. 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 It is. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl is right. National Grid. Uh, Here. Oh, no. We can, you can sit right there. We're going to make this easy. Oh, so, so we have <laughs> an easement associated with the raised pump pumping station. Uh, they seek an amendment to that easement uh, under item L mm -hmm. on your agenda is that it's uh, they didn't need to come back to the board to approve it. It wasn't a minor modification, but as you read your package, it's something that's required to proceed. Uh, since you approved the original easement, we're recommending approval of this amended easement. Mm -hmm. Then we go into a public hearing to Andrew Circle, though, right? Yes. So, so I will move approval of the easement for the National Grid at 1653 Great Pond Road yeah. as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I have a motion to move into, do I need a motion to move into public hearing? Yeah. I think yes. a motion, yeah. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're in public hearing. Um, this is in regards to the underground electrical conduits over at Andrew Circle. Yes. Uh, my name is Chris Wellington. I've been before the board before. I work for National Grid. I'm the uh, program manager for the rehabilitation or replacement of underground cable uh, for residential developments throughout uh, the Merrimack Valley and the North Shore. So what we have here, we have Andrew Circle, which we presented the plans to you. Um, in the past, our construction technique is to do open trench digging, and we put in conduit in an open trench, and then we bury it, and then we pull in the new primary cable. Um, while we were out there uh, evaluating the existing cable, we noticed that the street had just recently been paved. So I contacted the town and said that our cable had to, was at end of life, we're very close to it, and we wanted to replace the cable. And we recognized the sensitivity of digging up a newly paved street. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at as a pilot program is to do uh, directional drilling to drill down the street and to have um, the, the pipe pulled in, and then we bring the cable in afterwards. So it's less intrusive um, to the people along the street who have property, and it's less intrusive to the town because we dig under the roadways if we're crossing a roadway, and we're digging along the side of the road, and we try to maintain our clearance. We do maintain our clearances with existing utilities. So um, what you see is you'll see a, a pit that's probably a little bit smaller than this table, and then the machine sets and drills down the street and comes out into another pit. They attach the pipe on it and they pull the pipe back through the hole that it just created by drilling. And then we move the end of the conduits into a pull box, something at the end of the pit, and then we pull the wire in and, and make it up at the, uh, the transformer locations. So um, the plan before you shows several pull boxes and existing um, transformers, and all we're doing is replacing the primary cable. Uh, and I'd be glad to answer any questions. So if the, the street's just been paved, as you said, so how much damage or how much... Uh, will we don't expect to do any digging across the street. Nothing. We'll be digging under the street with the um, directional right, drill. so just the pits at the uh, whatever... On the, yes, on the, the side of the, the road. Two end points. Yeah, in the public right away. Yeah. And I think there's one section of uh, parking lot, and we'll be going under that. And I'm glad to answer any questions if anybody has any concerns. Uh, is there anybody? Yeah, residents. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Well, the Please, right. um, you I'm have sorry. to just um, state your name and address. Sure. Um, Denise Desmond of 18 Hebrew Circle. Okay. I, I had spoken to Socrates on the phone a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So the, the correspondence that we received says that um, directional drilling will be used, mm -hmm. except um, for secondary cables. Um, trenching will be used for that. So is there a plan to install any secondary cables? Uh, I am not aware of any secondary cable because the services run out of the back of the vaults and we're not replacing secondary cable. We're just doing primary. So I'm not sure why he spoke about secondary cable. Okay. Um, there will be some trenching. So uh, when, we, when we set a pull box in front of the transformer, we can't very well drill that last six or eight feet from the transformer to the pull box. It's just not feasible to do that. So they hand dig it with a shovel. The guys actually do the hand digging. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a trench about maybe a foot and a half wide. And then they'll, they'll physically install a conduit from the pull box to the transformer vault itself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there will be some trenching, but it's not like a backhoe. Typically, we use a backhoe and just get a trench down the street. There won't be that. So I think from our perspective, we just wanted to know if there is any damage to our landscaping as well, if that will be repaired. Yes. So the, the you know, 
as was just stated, the road was recently done and it mm -hmm. was beautiful, so we were concerned about that. Um, and then the other consideration for us, because we have two different associations on Andrew's surface, mm -hmm. we have four buildings. Um, and if there's any damage that's going to be done to the landscaping, that would be repaired. So when we do the pit, and, we'll, and we're going to be installing a pull bus that's a, a little bit bigger than this table, but it's flush with the ground. And it's got like a cement cover on it. So there will be some um, new equipment out there because we, we need it to be able to put the, uh, the primary into uh, the device that we can get over to the transformers. Um, any soil or lawn that's disturbed, we will receive okay. the lawn and put loom. Okay. That's what we do. And when, when is this work slated to begin? Uh, we want to start as soon as possible. So as soon as, if this passes tonight, I'll call the contractor tomorrow and tell them that we want to get a start date. And if you want, um, I, I can get your name and number, I'll give you my card. Mm -hmm. And to anybody who, who's involved, I'll give you my card. And if you send me an email or call me tomorrow, yeah, then I'll be able to get back okay. to you and keep you in the loop. And any disruption, will there be any disruption to our traffic? Too? No. 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 Okay. You should be able to get by all the equipment. Okay. We do actually have um, a number of power outages on the Andrew Circle. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, so the information I received from Socrates is that that will help to it will. correct that, and that we won't have because we yep. have power outages. I think that's the main point. Yes, it is. Yeah, because that equipment, the, what's in the ground, is pretty old, and it's not in conduit presently. Right, it's not. So it's not protected. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I don't know. You want Alexis over hot. Does anybody ask any questions? Okay. I just, if I can make a couple. So, sure. so we appreciate uh, the approach of directional drilling. You probably on the Thomas and Moore turn many times we would pave the roadway not to allow you yes. in the roadway so that we don't um, have to do it again. Just some concerns with directional drilling. What's the depth of the directional drilling? Well, directional drilling can be, we're, we're typically put in about three feet. Okay. Well, we can go, they can go 10, 20. I mean, it's the technology is they can, you know, they use the same technology for drilling wells, so I mean it, it can go very deep. Um, we just go deep enough to maintain clearances. That's all. On other utilities, substance. other utilities ourselves, and so we we would just require two things. Uh, the first is that any damage done to any of those um, subsurface utility lines be the responsibility of natural drilling, yeah. uh, obviously. Yeah. And two, if for some reason um, the, the infrastructure of the roadway is somehow uh, compromised as a function of directional drilling. Uh, to cause uh, cracking within the roadway, that you'd be responsible for fixing any cracking that resulted from that. Sure. Sometimes with directional drilling, because you're moving material underneath, the road can settle right. to a certain Sorry. degree, causes some cracking. Uh, if that was a curb to curb replacement, we would expect that as a condition of the permit as well. Sure. I mean, I, we've had, these people have done a lot of projects for NSTAR and Eversource, and we asked them about that and what they do for roadways. They go a little bit deeper under the roadway, and they, they pump a slurry in around the pipe, so it, it makes it more firm, and, and so they recognize that. They've been doing the same kind of work with water mains on, on oh, casting yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a new technique for us, but it's Great. been around for a long time. Great. Excellent. Okay. Super. Do I have a motion then, if there are no other questions, to close the public hearing? Madam Chair, I move to close the public hearing for National Grid, petition 2008-63798, Andrew Circle. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So the hearing is now closed. So we just want any motion to include the conditions set forth by uh, the Public Works Department in their April 27th memo regarding this. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, we, haven't, we haven't approved it yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I think you're in. We closed the hearing. So we closed the oh, hearing. Oh. But do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Including Andrew's verbiage. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Time. Now you can run. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great have night. Have a great night. You too. Okay. Can I have a motion to move into licensing? Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, we now in license. Okay. So first on the agenda for license, I will give everybody an opportunity to kind of clear before we continue. <coughs> okay, so the first on the agenda is a request from Sal's to have a uh, mobile food truck located at 490 Main Street while the restaurant is being renovated. Um, is there anyone here? Do you need me to come up? Absolutely. Yeah, come on up. Tell us what you're going to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, 
Yeah, we had um, just a, some input from the from the fire department and the health department sure. Um, sure. with respect to inspections and, yep. and the operation of the truck. Uh, but I you know, want you to tell us what you're doing. And sure. Yeah. So we're. Um, uh, can you introduce yourself? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. My name is Greg Ryan. I'm from uh, uh, La Polla Companies. I've been with Sal for uh, geez, since '99, so it's been a while. But um, we're going to do uh, probably a long overdue remodel of the location just over here. Great. Um, been meeting actually was with Brian today, as a matter of fact, and uh, Michelle doing another walkthrough, kind of working through some of the. Um, logistics of, of the remodel and what they might want to see. Um, and what brings us today is we're just looking to put the food truck on our lot, on our property, um, during that remodel, which we estimate to just be a couple of weeks. Um, the fire trucks, not the fire truck, the food truck is fully licensed by the fire department, uh, will be inspected by Michelle. Um, and you know, go under the same standards of a full health inspection as 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 anything. This full Ansel system. It's a brand new Freightliner truck. Mm -hmm. Absolutely uh, gorgeous. It's, it's got all the bells and whistles. Ansel systems, um, holding tanks, gray water tanks, and you know, all that sort of stuff. So what will be? So it'll actually be. Um Somewhere where patrons can go in and eat inside of it? Or? No, no it's just be a walk-up. Just a walk-up. Yeah. Walk so okay. in, the, in the application process with health, we are not requesting any seats or anything to be, you know, we're not looking to put picnic tables in our parking lot. Um, and um, it'd just be, just be walk-up service. And will it be your normal hours of operation? Um, not, not completely, no. There, it's probably more in that, you know, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. I think I put 8 on the licensing. Um, but I can't see us doing much, you know, frankly, after it gets after dinner hours. It's really like day one hours. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah although. Makes sense. Although doing it now with warm weather would be so great. No, no. Uh, we're looking to do this probably in August. Um, it's, probably, it's a good time for us. We do have, we, you know, we talked a little bit about we have a uh, opportunistic spot across from the middle school, and a lot of the kids um, will just come. You know, it's, it's almost like it's, it's turned out, which is a good thing, because we've been around for so long, it's turned out to be a little bit of a safe haven for people to get picked up after school, which we don't mind. And, and some, of the kids, some of the kids patronize us, some of them don't. It's not that big of a deal. We kind of um, accept that with where we are in town, and um, it, it kind of works. So, but so. this wouldn't be coming under the same category as our mobile food trucks. Like you're not no, it was a question. Of Correct, yes. And that was very clear with, um, with Michelle and Brian, we're really not looking to, we're, we have no, I can promise you, we have no interest in driving the truck around the common, um, trying to hawk a slice out the window. Um, you know. Can you uh, make my house go down in the middle? Yes. <laughs> I think we can modify the permit, I was going to Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, well, we could probably make an exception, yeah. Um, no, we're just looking to get it passed just for this remodel purposes. Um, I do understand it's if you go if you exceed the four events, which would be days, um, then you're essentially applying for the full license. It makes complete sense. I get it, um, but it is not our um, uh, desire to park on Main Street and try to sell a slice of pizza and a French fry. So will this be one of our <laughs> mobile food? <laughs> <laughs> this will one, one. So okay. Well, we, we don't have any other. Our applications, right? No. right? And, and what, what would happen? So, if if they finish the renovation, can they can they um, you know give the license up and, and then it becomes available again, or is it? it um, yeah, I know it it lasts until March thirty first, I think, or May thirty first, something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, but your intent is to only have it during the renovation time. Correct. Yeah. yeah. You could voluntarily return it if the build business opens. Get a CFO in the, the business and it's back up in operation. We <coughs> certainly reach out and make sure that they're, you don't have an interest in having it anymore. And yeah. if we have a, a rush to the door for, for permits, but at this point we're not. There's not a lot right. of interest. With that. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions, comments? Do I have a motion? Move that the Board of Selection Acting as Licensing Commission has approved the request of South Pizza for a mobile food truck license. Great. I have a motion, a second. Any discussion? All right, well, good luck. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks. Good luck with the renovations, too. I'm sure it'll be nice. Okay, next we have a request from... Let me get there. 
We have a request from Ashley Piazza, Director of Events at Small X Farm. Ashley is requesting to extend the hours of their entertainment license from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. on July 30th and October 7th, so two dates, including, uh, okay, so we have favorable recommendations from the building, fire, and police departments. Um, Mrs. Polak. Yeah, right. I'm here instead of Ashley. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I remember pulling that lion fire thing up Main Street in the 4th of July two years. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, it was also in our 350th parade. Well, you may get a uh -huh. chance to do it again. I was just going to say. Yeah, I, you know, you know I'll, I'll throw myself on the sword. I'll sacrifice myself, no problem. Do you have any horses at the farm we could borrow for? <laughs> uh, no, no, I've got two, I've got two pregnant uh, alpacas, though. The, the <laughs> That'd be an interesting <laughs> fire. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, thank you for, for hearing this request. Um, I hope that in the past year we've demonstrated that and earned your trust in terms of the conduct of our business on the farm. Um, I'm, I've not been made aware of any problems uh, or complaints in the past year from from our area, which is really kind of nice to, to come and say and say that to you. The, these uh, requests come from the result of uh, two separate re uh, requests from two different parties. One is a wedding that they, they're getting married at St. Mike's at 5.30, so they can't be there until probably 6.30, uh, at the, 6 or 6.30, and we want to allow them their, you know, normal amount of time, which is five hours, which would actually be less. The other one is a, is a group from Malta. And I think Malden High School reunion in October. And it's on a Friday again, so people coming from driving from Malden um, uh, at that time of the year with, with leaf peepers, they don't expect they'd be able to get there in time. Now, in any anything that we've done on the farm, uh, nothing is put in, in any of our, 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 our promotional stuff or writing about anything concerning after 10 o'clock. We don't promote it at, we don't, we don't promote it, as a matter of fact, we try and steer people away from it, but these two were uh, exceptions, and we've sort of discussed this in the past. So, um, so are, are there any questions? So currently, we don't have a, a request for liquor license outstanding. Um, so I'm assuming that will become yeah. in at some point. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So this, yeah. this is for step one, and then this is step one. We want to make sure we had the, the the time slot allotted. Okay. Um, there were no um, questions. There were no comments or concerns raised by police or fire or DPW. Mm -hmm. um, Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion. A second. Further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well said. Good luck. Great. Thank you very much. See you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> okay. Next on the agenda, we have a request from um, Ankat Patel of Denrock Liquors for an entertainment license. I don't see anybody here. Almost. Yeah. It seems like TV and movies was yeah, checked just off. Cable TV, widescreen TV, and movies. So I don't know if they're going to be showing movies there or just maybe playing. I think just having a TV in the show. Having TV and uh, the uh, any of the entertainment that could be on that. So there's nobody here to... So I... Yeah. No. Okay. Well, I mean, normally I would move no, because they're not here to tell me exactly what they want. You're telling me what they want. Oh, I'm, I'm just assuming from the application. Well, I'm not assuming from the application. The application usually will check off the appropriate boxes. That well, yeah. I Were they asked to be here at all? Or did they did they ask if they should be here? I assume from I the application the process they're always... Their own personal use while they're... Maybe. Like if you go to Main Street Liquors, they have a TV. I think oh, I, yeah, that's true, too. That's true, too. You know, yeah, Macklin's has a TV. Yeah, that's true. They play sports, that's, sports I think and stuff. Have. Coffee shops have entertainment licenses. Okay. It's pretty. Because any time you put a mouth to TV on the, the wall TV. and have something... It's just, I it. think... All right. For their own personal yeah. problem. All right. All right. If any of them are sick of watching cable or they didn't pay their cable bill, they can put in a DVD or something. Sure. Yeah. Watch a movie. They make those again. They make those again. They do, like, in the back of the TVs. Okay, do we have a motion on this one? Uh, motion to accept the license. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're good on that one. Um, next is a number of license requests from Merrimack College. Um, well, it looks like a, it looks like a number of alumni receptions. Looks like a, well, it's all the same day. 
Yeah. yeah. And it looks like one leads yeah. into the next. Um, one day leads into the next. This is the yeah. alumni related. This is the yeah. day yeah. they invite the alumni. Except for the Board of Trustees, they're going to have a little I, thing I, I too. We'll discuss the alumni. Okay, so we a have second. a motion and a second to approve all of the requests from Merrimack mm -hmm. College uh, for one day wine and malt license. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, I have a motion to close the licensing. Motion to move out of licensing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. There is no old business. There is no new business. Is there any public comment? There is not, since everyone has left the room, except the state. Stan. Everybody's left the room. Wow. He already used up Stan, how was the, uh, how was sheep account. sharing yesterday? Sheep <laughs> sharing was great. We had, at our table, we had 70 people come to the the Circle Society table and ask for information. That is fantastic. Oh, I miss it. It's a very family-friendly, dog-friendly event. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I have my dogs there. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything, uh, what's left? Well, you, you know, I, I may get a minute report. I, I get uh, one stand says no, it's three minutes. I assume I get like three and a half. <laughs> Tell me it's report. Thank you, thank you. Stand. 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 One correction to my stuttering earlier it's now called the Northeast Massachusetts Mosquito and Wetlands Management <coughs> District. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, everything awesome. north and whatever. Yeah, both yeah. North Shore and Merrimack Valley, uh, both. Uh, so the board, yeah, knows, really. the board is aware we spent uh, uh, five plus hours with the rating agency staff uh, talking about what yes. we think are, are the reasons why we are an excellent community beyond and uh, deserving of a AAA rating. Um, ultimately, rating agencies base the criteria for their ratings on, on seven fundamentals or seven core categories. I think some of them fit uh, very well into our uh, strengths and some less well and that's just how it is it's not uh, it's not a criticism to the community or just just sometimes uh, you know rating agencies don't look at the community first they look at what they're looking for in terms of criteria first so in some places they'll fundamentally be AAA all the time it might be the nature of the, the per capita income it could be the nature of the economic development I, I think we made a very good case that we believe that we're, we're that kind of community um, and we'll find out later this week if that's the case. But um, we're cautiously optimistic things will go really well. They have certainly communicated that um, from a financial perspective, which are really two of the seven categories, we've done everything um, expected. And uh, they really, uh, at least one member of the group who came, wanted to hear the story. He had been here uh, in the past during the first 10 years of, of uh, this particular um, century and, and had been around and seen the numbers and, and so saw the, the positive change and wanted uh, a, a deeper understanding of, of how we got where we were and we talked a lot about sustainability and planning and partnerships, which have been the sort of core fundamentals about, of how we've got a lot done. So um, I think that piece went well and we'll see if we'll see that later in this week when we end up. Super. Thank you, Scott. Any other? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next meeting, June 6th.